Well, I think it is finally time for me to give you guys this long awaited garden tour of the new garden space with the expansion that we've already added into it. Um, full disclaimer, if you've been here before for my previous garden, you know my garden has weeds. Like this is a real garden and I have lots of other things to do with my time. So this is not a weed free, perfectly manicured, well maintained garden space. I grow lots of flowers and lots of food and lots of weeds. Oh well. Um, also, this was lawn last year, so the weeds are going to be an even bigger battle for me than they were in my previous garden. And this is clay soil, which I have never grown anything in before, so this is a big learning curve for me. And it's interesting because when it's too dry, it's really hard to do anything with this. Oh, there's a spider on my camera. Hi, spider. <laughs> but when it's too dry, it's like concrete. You can't do anything with it. And when it's too wet, everything just balls up in a big ball of mud. So there's like a perfect time when you can plant or weed. And other than that, it's just kind of here. But I will walk around and give you guys the lay of the land and talk about what survived transplant from the old house to this one and what did not. And I have hawks flying overhead. It's always chaotic here and always in my videos, but I hope you guys like the new garden space. So this is the general layout of the garden. It's long and then it goes, it just wraps around the back of the house, so nothing too exciting. <sighs> it's a mess. It's weeds. I don't even know where to start. Um, here I have a row of peppers and then there's marigolds between them. I did plant my peppers pretty packed together this year. I had read, I don't remember where, I read somewhere that peppers like to be grouped together. So I've got bunches of three and four and even five in some of these tomato cages and I'll see how they do. Maybe it's a mistake to put that many in and maybe it will be fine. We will see. Over here I have my asparagus bed. These are all asparagus that I transplanted from the last house. I think pretty much every one that I moved came up. Although you're not going to be able to see them very well between all the weeds. Like I said, <laughs> the weeds are crazy. I am going with the kind of perennial flower border theme that I did at the old property again. So right here, these are all of my iris that I transplanted, which they're already kind of on their way out. And then we switch into some lilies with more iris and then there's some hollyhocks and all the other things going down. This disaster was supposed to be my strawberry bed. I transplanted quite a few strawberries from the old house and I actually bought some more strawberry starts and they just have not done well. I have maybe 10 strawberry plants in here and if you recall at the other property I had two 12 by 12 strawberry beds which barely produced enough strawberries for us and we just don't really have that kind of space to dedicate to the strawberries here so I'm actually thinking I might pull out the few that I have and just tuck them in along with the perennial flowers and let them spread in there and just till up this garden space and have it for something else next year. And I'm kind of thinking the asparagus will get moved up along a corner of the house as well. That'll be shady for it for the meantime, but we do plan on building a different house at some point. So this one will be gone and a new one will be up in a different spot. Hopefully, fingers crossed, sometime in the next couple years here, <laughs> which means it would be back in the sun. But for now, this is just kind of how, how we're doing things. This is my rhubarb patch, which is going to seed. I only brought four rhubarb plants here with me. I had 12 or 13 at the other house, so this is definitely not enough rhubarb. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not enough rhubarb for us. But I'm thinking eventually I will get more plants and just kind of extend them into the woods. I'm not too worried about the chickens trying to eat rhubarb. So I think there's a few things that I can move into the woods and free up some garden space. Here I have a lone tomatillo plant. So I bought this on Mother's Day weekend greenhouse shopping with my mom. 
And then after I got home, I was like, huh, I wonder if tomatillos are one of those things that you need to, <laughs> to actually make any fruit set. And lo and behold, it does look like I need two. I have not been able to find another one anywhere, but I'm also unwilling to kill the poor thing. So it's just going to be decorative, I guess. Um, some of my hollyhocks survived transplant, but actually I lost most of them. But, I mean, I'll take two. It's better than nothing. This is one of my mini rose bushes. And sadly, all of my mini roses except for one died. The large rose plants, every single one survived. All of the mini roses except for one did not. So this is the mini rose that survived. He's kind of tucked in here with my bleeding heart. My peonies also survived and I'm really sad though they were loaded with little buds like they were gonna bloom and I was gonna have a bunch of them and then something came through and nipped them all off I do not know what it is but it was looking like I was gonna have a lot of peonies and then now I get none so that's a bit of a bummer this is my comfrey I took a chunk of that giant comfrey plant from the other house and it's kind of here in this walkway, which these get so big, I'm thinking I'll have to transplant it again somewhere. And I'm kind of working on like a perennial herb garden in that area. So he may get moved over there eventually. This area, if you saw my video in the winter about the new garden, I kind of showed a map of the layout in the space. There was a lot of perennials from the other house in this area and a lot of them died. My thyme, which had done amazing at the other house and survived everywhere, did not make it. None of my dianthus survived. The mini roses that were in here did not survive. My chicory didn't survive. Um, my globe thistle didn't survive. What else? The two mini roses, I'm not sure if I said that already. Um, yeah, no, it just, oh, my Shasta Daisy, so a lot of things that I'm kind of bummed at <laughs> did not come back in here. There are some things that have came back, so chives and spiderwort, which is about to bloom, and then we have the sedum, and I can't remember what this thing is called, storm cloud something, whatever that is. Um, I think... My echinacea is coming back. These weeds are terrible, guys. I swear I've been weeding at least an hour every day. <laughs> um, and some of my bee balm has come back. So that's here. He's getting chewed on a little bit. And then right here, I planted all my gladiolas. because We know how much I love them. The soil was super hard when I did it, so I honestly just plopped them down and layered some compost over top of them and we'll see how it does over here in my little perennial area my mom brought me her giant sage plant this is just a little floral hanging basket that i have going here then i've got so there's sage and there's more bee balm here's some more thyme that i bought and then there's yarrow and then i planted a few other herbs in here which i can't remember there is tucked in the weeds over here somewhere right here. <laughs> this is Beard's Tongue, which I'm going to pull that out and put that somewhere else. And then I have this little backdrop of lilies for it. And there were some tulips and crocus in there and they did not bloom. They sprouted and did not bloom. So I don't know if they're just buried too deep or they don't like the clay or what, but that was an epic failure. And then my garlic is behind. Almost all of my garlic sprouted, which I'm really, really happy about. But I won't know how well it does, you know, how big the cloves are getting, or the bulbs, until I pull it up. So it looks great right now, but at the end of it, I, I just won't know until I can harvest. Um, my grow tower, this year I am trying to mostly do herbs in, and then I did put a few lettuces and onions and spinach in here. Some of it's doing well, some of it's not, but it's not all in sun. I know I put lavender up here so I'm wondering if maybe that's lavender starting. And I've got lots of dill which I should probably think about 
harvesting because we are using a lot of dill because I'm making a lot of pickled eggs. <laughs> Dan really likes them. My two blueberry bushes survived, although they really got pushed back. Like this is how big it was last year and now this is where it's coming out. And the same, this one was pretty big and he's way down here. So they were not thrilled about the move. This is a swamp milkweed which is coming back and then some more irises inside of it and this is more irises um lots of my ferns and hostas survived my purple clematis survived which it's actually just past its peak blooming it it should bloom more later as you can see little ones already starting but it just had a bunch of beautiful purple flowers on it and now they're gone but i haven't seen any from the white one so I think I only have the purple clematis now, but a lot of my shade plants did survive. There's like my lily of the valley and some of the ground covers, the lamium and my columbine and the different flocks and stuff. Um, all of my dahlias are in pots of one form or another this year because I really liked that system last year with being able to pull out the tubers and store them for the winter. And my mom actually kept them in her garage for me over winter because obviously with moving and selling the house, I didn't have access to the crawl space again. So that worked well um, until we can build our own place with a basement. Mom's in charge of all my dahlia tubers and gladiolas over winter. So thanks, mommy. <laughs> um, let me see here. This is a climbing rose I just bought. I'd like, I'm trying to get as much stuff to climb the fence as I can. My elderberries did shockingly well in the transplant. I think I transplanted 14 different plants and every single one came up and some of them have already put up new shoots in the ground. I was not expecting them all to come up and this is a pretty big section of the garden. So I'm thinking I'm kind of going to let them have a break this year and not stress them out too much and then next year I'm going to come through and pull some of the smaller ones and this is another thing that will be tucked into the woods with the rhubarb and then I've got all those shade plants along that fence which it does get enough shade there for them that it's not really going to kill them but I would like to continue the perennial flower border there so I'll probably pull those out and tuck the shade plants in with my elderberries just like I did at the other house um, it seems like I'm already planning to do a lot of rearranging in here and that's because I am <laughs> because when we were transplanting all this stuff over here it was last fall when it was really too late to be transplanting stuff and with the trying to pack up and move and the kids in school and the divorce stuff going on I just didn't have time to really sit and plan out where things were going so it was dig a hole stick it in the ground we can find a better home for it later. Like Dan and I were planting the asparagus at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> so it was crazy. But I have my two um, little TP trellises that I had made for tomatoes at the other house, which I brought because I loved them. Of course I could have made more, but I wanted those ones. In this area, there's not too much, but here you can kind of see we've got the peppers and the garlic and then like the flower area. This I've kind of left open. These are summer squash plants for my mom. And then I have sweet potatoes in here. I'll probably remove the wood at some point. I had just put it there so basically that the kids didn't come and step on my sweet potatoes while I was waiting for them to sprout. But as you can see, they are coming up nicely. I have potatoes in my grow bags again, which those three are doing well. I don't know why this one isn't doing anything. It's the same as this. So I haven't decided if I'm going to try and stick something else in that or if it's just a goner for the year. Over along the back of the house where it's really shaded, I have more of the spring or fall cool weather crops because I got them out a little bit late. I wanted them in a more shady area so that they would do okay. So this is my cabbages and then we have broccoli and then we have Brussels sprouts and then my peas which are <laughs> getting a little overwhelmed with weeds in between but like I said guys 
my garden is a weedy mess and it just is what it is over on um, the stairs to the back of the house i have a few pots i guess i can show you those i started marigolds i did a ton of marigolds from seed this year because they're so expensive to buy but i took most of them out these are all the ones that i have left that i need to plant and then i have tried starting basil in these so then i'll get like my seating area in my vegetable washing station because I brought that from the other house these pavers I think eventually I would like to get more of and if you recall I had kind of started a really beautiful rock path at the other house I don't have access to rocks like that here but I did enjoy the path that was weed free because of the solid rock so I think eventually I'm gonna just do a border around the garden in those but this side I'm basically calling more of like my perennial, eventually potager style garden like the old one was. It's just kind of far out to call it a potager garden right now because it is a hot mess. <laughs> but that is the eventual goal. Now Dan does have some rocks, so I am working on just doing around the border of this side of the garden so like this is my rose bed which this is the last thing before we go into my more market style garden so I'm going to encircle this little bed of roses with rocks and then I'm just going to put all these teeny rocks that I find everywhere else in with the roses to try and help keep down the weeds I had used wood mulch in the garden pretty extensively at the other house and that worked really well for basically everything but the roses. The roses did not enjoy the wood mulch. So I've got rocks here. We'll fill it with rocks. Here's my other collection of dahlias. And then in here, I have starts of some things from my mom. She bought me some raspberry starts because only one of the five that I transplanted survived. And she bought me, brought me, excuse me, not bought, because she's got starts of all these golden raspberry plants and blackberry and grapevine. So these are also all things that are going to get tucked into the woods somewhere. But <laughs> I just want to make sure they've really, really taken root nicely before I stick them out there. Because that's going to be a bit of a shock. But this is the other kind of end to my more decorative garden space. And you can see I started bringing the rocks here. So I had bought another clematis to go in that and hopefully vine up there, but it didn't survive and I'm super bummed about that because I think it would have been really pretty. And then up in these hanging baskets, I have nasturtiums and cucumelons because the kids really wanted more cucumelons. Um, out here is the, we'll call it market garden. This is where I am doing more mass food production, things that need space, and this area I can completely rip out at the end of the year and then we can till it up. My last garden was a no-till garden and I really loved that, but with this clay, it's really going to require tilling and amending for several years. We actually already brought in a lot of compost and worked it into this before we even planted it, and you really can't tell. <laughs> It's going to be years and years and years of this. But I we had this little extra piece of no-climb fencing from when we put up my horse pen. So I have my tomatoes and basil, which I'm hoping some of the basil seed that I put in those pots on the stairs goes. Because I don't have near enough basil. I like to have a basil plant by every tomato and I don't even have enough for that. And we love pesto. So I just, I need all the basil. I don't even have as much of it as I had last year. In terms of tomato plants, I think I have about 40 and the same for peppers, which is double what I did last year. But last year, my tomato harvest was terrible because they got blight so badly. So I'm hoping to avoid that this year. I had originally only had about 26 tomato plants and then a friend gifted me a box with 40 more so I kept some of them and then gave some to some other friends and I didn't have any more space along this fence for her tomatoes so they've all been planted along the fence you'll see there's a marigold with every one and my thought is that I'll just train them to the fence and that that's just where they're going to be 
I have, I think, 300-ish onions in here. So I did a white, a yellow, and a red onion. And they're doing really good so far. Um, I did 300 onions last year as well in a much bigger space. And they did terrible. <laughs> uh, probably due to neglect from all of the chaos that was going on last year. But I've never really been that successful at growing onions. So hopefully this is the year. And I'm also trying to kind of learn how to use my space more efficiently. Like even my garlic, I've planted just a few more garlic cloves than I did last year, but I have them in a much smaller space because I'm just trying to be more efficient and get more out of my garden space. The other one was a lot of pathways for wheelbarrows and all of that because I was doing everything on my own. I don't have to do everything on my own here. And Dan has a skid steer that he brings me compost in, which makes hauling everything easier. So I don't need, you know, four foot aisles everywhere, <laughs> which is nice. Here I have green beans and those like dragon tongue beans that I had last year, which I don't see any of those ones sprouting yet. So We'll see if I get any of those, but it looks like all of the green beans are sprouting. This is a bed of radishes. I had started off trying to make rows like I normally do, and it was just so wet and mucky, and it was not working. So I figured I was going to experiment, and I just shook out a couple bags and then put some compost over it, and clearly I'll have to massively thin some areas but you can eat you know the little radish greens like that so it's not really a waste over here I planted two rows of okra but nothing has come up yet so I think I'm gonna have to replant my okra which is okay I have cucumbers in here I don't see any of the ones that I planted by seed starting yet the two big ones were from my mom and I've got one more little section of that fencing that I'm going to run between those just like I did the tomatoes. Or I'm going to make Dan do it. <laughs> and then I will tie them to it. Along the fence line, the kids and I planted our sunflowers like we always do. I think I'm going to have to come through on one of these days when it rains and split them up quite a bit more. Because some of these are mammoth sunflowers and that's just... That's way too close together. But we were using seeds from what I'd collected. So we were not quite sure of the germination rate. And it looks like they did well. So I'm going to have to deal with those a little bit. I have, I think, 9 or 10 rows of corn here. Which is just starting. So I did, I think, 7 or 8 of them at once and then I did another one like a week and a half later. I should get better at su I can't say it succession. <laughs> there we go. Succession planting. <laughs> I need to get better at that so that everything isn't just you know, I don't have 80,000 years of corn at once for a week and then there's no more. But I'm just one thing at a time. I have planted some melons of different types out here where you see these random marigolds planted and nothing. They just haven't sprouted yet. It really hasn't been warm enough and I only put them out about a week ago. So I'll give them another couple days and if they don't do anything, then I will think about replanting things in there. Otherwise over here we have, I think these are zucchini from my mom. And then pumpkin from her. And then six watermelon plants. Which we'll see how the watermelon do because they're in a little more shady spot. And then a cantaloupe from her. And again you can see the tomatoes along the fence line. So yeah, that's the garden and all of the weeds. And I think I pretty much covered everything that survived and didn't. Oh yes, my wisteria that I had just bought last year that I was really excited about did not survive the move, but maybe one day I can try again with that. I basically have the whole garden planted out other than the basil that I'm hoping germinates yet and those few marigold plants. I should do carrots yet. I'm just in this 
back and forth and I don't know how they're gonna do in the clay and I'm so far behind I'll probably end up trying a small carrot patch because they are one of my favorite things to grow but I'm just not having high hopes for it and I actually really need to get out my zinnia seeds like today like as soon as I get off of this I'm going to go get my seeds and get them out and put compost over them. It's supposed to have a big storm later today and then they can get watered in and they're already 10, 12 days behind when I would have liked to have them out, but I will get it done. And that's the garden in all of its glory. <laughs> Hopefully stuff will be blooming like crazy soon and I will actually get around to showing you guys more of that. We've just been so busy we've got 20 cows here now so that's been crazy we're trying to fatten one up right now whose name is meatloaf you can guess why we're trying to really fatten him up which keeps me busy and we just got a giant swing set play set for the kids and had to clear out a spot in the woods to put it which is perfect because I can actually see it right from the garden so the kids are nice and close to where I am at and you know, riding horses and kayaking and we were foraging for mushrooms and we're just doing all the things and super busy so I have not been great about videoing anything really I'm just whew, living and yeah let me know if there's anything specific you guys would like to see of what we're doing around here and thanks for watching <laughs>